Um, so I'm Kelly and I'm currently in my fourth and final year of the actual co-op program. And I guess for the others, would you like to introduce yourselves? Jess. Maybe Jess, Jess first. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so yes, I'm Jess. I'm a second year material science and engineering co-op scholar. As we were chatting about, I'm yet to start my first placement. So I start with Rio Tinto in about a month. Um, and I've been with co-op from the start. So it's been a really great journey for me from first year until now. Um, I, I guess I'll go next. Hi guys, I'm Riddle. I'm also a second year co-op student studying a Bachelor of Business Information Systems. Um, like Jess, you know, I started in my first year. It's been a great journey. I've completed one placement with co-op so far, where Christian is right now, I've completed six months with American Express. Um, and that was a really, really good journey as well. Um, so yeah, keen to share my experiences with you. And without further ado, Christian, feel free to introduce yourself. Oh, cool. um, hey guys. So I'm Christian. I'm in my third year doing marketing. So I'm part of the 2020 cohort. Uh, and this is actually my last placement. So last year I was at McDonald's and start of this year I was at Colgate, only recently joining the Amex team. But yeah, I came to sort of share my experience and some thoughts and things. Okay, so um, the main point of today's session is to kind of just introduce you guys to the co-op program and what you can expect in your first year. So um, can everyone see my screen with the slides up? Okay, so in case you haven't heard, we're just gonna go through a bit about what the co-op program actually is and give you a bit of intro. So the co-op program is um, a program for students who are not only good at theory, but they have the practical skills and capabilities to do their placements in the workplace. So that means you're able to get the knowledge from university and then apply it straight in your placements and getting that work experience before you even graduated. So I guess in that way, you graduate with a really impressive resume and CV that really sets you apart from all the other graduates. Okay, so um, as part of the co-op program, there are a lot of benefits. Um, these are just like a couple. There are way more than just these points. Um, but firstly, I guess one of the main points is that we go on industry placements. So there are three placements we typically go on to, as the others mentioned. So personally, I went to KPMG, Allianz and MetLife. Um, and then all of these other points we'll go through today as well. So I won't go into too much detail right now. Um, but basically with co-op, there's so much development, whether it's social development, professional development, and co-op's just there for, for you from the very first day that you begin all the way until you end. And I guess it's quite a bit of a good bonus that we get 19.6K a year because that really helps your bank account and it looks quite healthy after you get that fortnightly payment. Um, other than that, um, the co-op program really offers you the chance to meet other people who you'll work with in the workplace or as well as people who will support you through your academics or through your social life at uni. Um, one of the main benefits is that you can really meet people who mentor you and guide you. So people who have experienced the things that you are likely to experience later in the workplace. So for example, when I was looking for my grad role, um, I kind of just reached out to my buddy and my manager and asked like, oh, what are some tips you have during the application and interview stage? And they were really happy to just guide me through that whole process. So I guess that's just one example of how the court program really gives you that opportunity to be mentored and guided. Um, so as I mentioned, you have support from all the different angles that you might think you need. So with your co-op cohort, it's people who started with you from the very first day. So they'll help you um, get like, I guess, like if you're going through difficulties, they'll probably be going through the same thing as you. So you can kind of work it out together. So it's really nice to have that support from that end. Um, as well as other people in the other years as well. So the co-op um, cohorts in other years are also very happy to help out. And there's actually a co-op society. So a group of co-op students who run social events, sports events, or things like that to help people get together and have a good time. Um, other than that, um, as I mentioned, there's academic coordinators who guide you. So if you're not sure what courses to enroll in, or if you're having a bit of difficulty understanding some concepts, you can just reach out to your academic coordinator and academic mentors, and they're more than happy to help you out in that regard as well. Okay, so um, 
we've mentioned a couple of the sponsors, but this is like a bit of a current sponsor snapshot, not a comprehensive list. Check out our website for all of the sponsors. Um, you'll see a lot of big names, um, companies that you'll likely want to end up working at. So um, one thing that I always get surprised by is like the broad scope of the sponsors. So I guess like Oportos, like I didn't really expect Oportos to be on the list. Like, don't worry, you guys won't be flipping burgers there. It's I think Oportos tends to be like um, accounting and information systems, I believe, but I'm not completely sure. You can check the website um, for which programs are with each sponsor and see which sponsors you're interested in. Um, other than that, there are the banks um, as well as the insurance companies. Um, so as I mentioned, I did my placements at um, KPMG Allianz and MetLife. So that's a consulting placement, a general insurance placement and a life insurance placement. So I guess like you choose the sponsors based on what you're interested in and what aligns with your passions and what you want to work at in the workplace. And I guess with this really broad um, scope of sponsors, you can also kind of figure out like what you're interested in as well. Okay, so where can your co-op journey take you? So there are three broad streams, so business, engineering, and science. Um, and underneath each one, there are the different programs. So um, for example, I'm in the actual study stream, so that's under business. Um, and the others have also introduced their individual programs as well. Um, but as I mentioned before, all of the details and all of the nitty gritty stuff is all on our website. So make sure you double check like what kind of different programs are available and what kind of things are you would do under that program and see whether that aligns with your like aspirations for your career. OK, so isn't co-op just for super academic people? So um, actually, not really. We look at much more than just academics and um, we also look at what your involvement in the community is. We're looking for students with motivation and ambition and the leaderships and skills and team playing skills. Who, and that way we find students who can balance their study and their life. Um, so much more than academics, we're looking for these personal qualities that can make you really thrive in the workplace. Um, because I guess after all, you're going to uni to learn. So it doesn't make sense to just get people who are at the, off the top of the bat, like smart people, because we're looking for much more than just book smarts. And this is the timeline of the key dates for this year. So if you haven't noticed, applications have already opened um, 1st of May and they will close 30th of September. So make sure to give yourself a lot of time to get started on your application and really polish that to the quality that you would like it to be. And I guess like starting early also gives you the opportunity to read for your app a couple of times and make sure you're answering each question and avoiding any typos. Um, and I guess like the rest of the timelines there, um, there's the interview and the video snapshots. Um, for these, um, you'll get an invitation if you've made it to the next stage. Um, so for now, I guess the main thing is to get started on your application and all of the information will come later. Yeah, and I guess with the application, a really good hint is to also regularly um, make sure you press save on your application on the website or alternatively put it in a Word doc and then transfer it across because the application portal does time out after a certain time. So just a good hint to just make sure you keep regularly saving your work. Okay, so are you eligible? So um, the main thing is that you must gain entry to the degree. So um, for most of um, the co-op programs, it's a minimum ATAR of 96, but some degrees have a higher ATAR than the others. So for example, for me, actual studies, it was 97.5. So you have to meet that 97.5 instead of 96 um, and no more than two gap years. Um, also for bonus marks, um, not all of them count. Um, it's only EAS adjustment factors only. Um, so make sure to check online or ask your careers advisor um, which adjustment factors count for you um, and make sure you just double check all of that before you um, enter in. But I guess the main thing here is that uh, don't kind of cut yourself out just because you don't think you can meet that ATAR requirement because the ATAR does fluctuate year to year and it all depends on the performance of your individual cohorts. So like, don't think like, oh, I'm only going to get an 85 so I can't apply for co-op. Um, really give yourself a shot because the easiest way to not get co-op is actually to not submit an application. So um, give yourself a shot at all of this. Um, there's nothing really to lose from writing an application, but a lot more to gain. 
um, whether it's the scholarship money that appeals to you or the placement that appeals to you or having that really good head start ahead of everyone. Um, so make sure you really make sure you submit that application rather than being scared to submit it. And these are our socials, so feel free to use your phones and scan the QR code. Um, it'll link you to our website as well as our calendar and all our social medias so you can keep in touch with us and see what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's a really, really quick run through of what the co-op program is. Um, I guess this next part of the session will mainly be focusing on the experience in your first year and what you can expect. Um, I guess I'll just randomly ask uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them in the chat and I'll ask the others um, to answer your questions as well. Okay, so Jess, uh, I guess with co-op, um, what do you think has been your highlight experience? Yeah, for sure. I think the highlight of my experience so far has been going on numerous camps with the co-op cohort. So we have a really special opportunity at UNSW to go on a first year camp with the co-op student society, which I forgot to mention at the start, I'm the social director of our society. So I went last year as a first year um, and it's really set up as a great environment where you can meet all the other co-ops across degrees and have that in a really safe, fun, inclusive space to get to know people, do challenges together. And then I got to come back again um, this year and as an organiser of it and run it, which was so rewarding. Um, we'll talk about it later. You also go on a leadership camp, which is just another great opportunity to develop your professional skills and also hang out with the great co-op cohort. But I won't talk too much about that because I know we will later. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing. So um, I guess you mentioned leadership camp, so let's get right into that. So I guess leadership camp is one of the big events for the first years. Um, you get to really learn like professional leadership and teamwork skills while you're there. But at the same time, it's not just about like all of that learning, it's also hanging out with your cohort and having fun. So that way you're able to put into practice the skills that you're learning with your teammates. So um, do, any of you want to talk about what your favorite part of leadership camp was? I'm happy to give my comments. Um, I've been warned not to share anything specific about leadership camp, so I have to watch what I'm saying. But I think overall, it's just a really um, both challenging but really fun experience. And I think normally when you think of like your typical school camps, you sort of like roll, roll, you sort of roll your eyes. And like, oh, just like another camp. But I think this one's definitely like really different. It's not really what you expect, but um, I think it's not really what you expect in all the good ways as well. And I know I had a lot of fun. So what's to look forward to? Yeah, I guess like it can it can be a bit tiring to learn new things sometimes, but um learning is part of the journey and improving yourself. Um so I guess in leading on to that, um one of the key parts of the co-op program is the opportunity to learn whilst you're still at uni and then applying that um, experience to the workplace. So um, through that, um, you go on to placements. Um, placements are basically where you go to the companies and you're doing actual like client work or things like that. Um, so for me, I feel like I've really learned like the industry toolkits that we use and the industry knowledge that is necessary for like future work. And I've really enjoyed my placements just because of all the guidance that I've had. Um, so maybe, Virgil, if you want to talk about like what you did on your placements and what you enjoyed from it. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so as a second year, I've only done one industry placement right now. You generally do three throughout your co-op degree. Um, and like I was telling you guys before, um, the industry placement that I did was at American Express. And honestly, I think the best part about you know having an internship over there is this type of company culture um so we had a lot of fun there there were a lot of other interns there at the same time um and we were able to bond over you know we used to go on walk sometime around Barangaroo um so it was really really nice in terms of the corporate culture but I also had a lot of sort of professional development as well and I got to do a lot of client facing work and I got to meet you know a lot of different people from a lot of different countries all over you know Europe Asia Pacific the Middle East like it was really really good just to see you know the different type of cultures present within the company especially such a such a big one such as American Express um and yeah I guess 
the best thing out of that was, you know, meeting the people. So whether that be the interns or whether that be, you know, the people overseas, it was just great to see the different opinions, different experiences that everyone had there and the way that we kind of collaborated to build solutions essentially for our teams. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess like that working with different people and like getting different knowledge is what makes each placement different to each other as well. So each of the three placements you go on to will also be extremely different to the ones that you've gone to before. So that's what I've also really enjoyed um, being able to work with all of these different people and get all of their different knowledges because they all have had different experiences as well and they get different knowledge as well and they can pass that on to you. And I guess on that note, um, Jess, um, I know you're going on to placement and it's very exciting. Do you want to tell everyone where you're going and um, exactly like where, which location? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so while we were waiting for you, we were talking about this before. Um, so I'm going on placement with Rio Tinto in Brisbane which is super exciting. So their office is in the heart of Brisbane. Um, and when I joined, I was told that, I was told that my placement would be in Brisbane if I chose to accept the scholarship, which I did. I think it's super exciting. Being a Sydney-based scholar, they do pay to relocate you. Um, so you get paid your scholarship while you're working and then they just cover the cost of my accommodation. And it's super exciting because while I'm in my second year now, as a first year, you might think, oh, all these placements sound so daunting. Like, how am I going to be able to handle it? But you get set up during your first year with the skills um, that you'll need to be able to succeed at work. So you're not expected to come fresh out of high school, just able to succeed wherever you go. The things that the, like these camps really set you up to have the interpersonal skills that you need in the workplace. And then also you do um, just technical development, things like, you, you know how to use Excel before you go on placement so I don't feel too out of place before I go to Brisbane and things like that that you get trained to do. Yeah there's a lot of um, preparation that goes ahead before the placement so you're definitely not plunged into the um, deep end. Um, so I don't know if any of you guys have experienced it but have you ever gone onto a site visit to see the sponsors before your placements? We did not. We had it online, so we weren't that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, um, yeah. yeah, so basically during um COVID, there wasn't the opportunity to go um onto the site visits. Um personally, I started co-op in my second year, so I didn't go on the site visits either. Um, but um from what I've heard from my cohort, it was a really good opportunity to actually visit the office because most of them are like really pretty and they're like located really high up, so the view is like really nice. Um, so while you're working there, you get to see like the harbour side and stuff like that. It's very good. Um, but I guess above all, like the site visits, um, you get to get, know your sponsors a bit better and you visit every single sponsor. So it's not just like, oh, you only visit one and you only know that sponsor. You get to visit all of them, even the sponsors that you don't get to place at. Um, so whilst you're there, you get to visit the workplace and kind of find out about what work you will be involved while on placement there. I guess like a really good thing is that you meet the people because I think rather than just like the office itself, it's really rewarding to actually meet the people because they're what makes the culture of the site uh, of the sponsor really good. Um, so if you go to the site visit and in particular, um, you kind of vibe with this one sponsor and you just reach out to them afterwards and ask them like, oh, how's your work been? Um, what kind of things can I do in preparation for my placement there? I'm sure they'll be happy to help out as well. So I guess like site visits really offer you that opportunity to get connected before you even go on placements. Um, other than the site visit, um, there's also the IT induction and Excel workshops. Um, so did any of you complete the Excel workshops? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want me to like just talk about it a bit? I'm yeah, sure talk about it. you've also done it, right? And Jess? Okay. Um, the IT Excel workshop was, was pretty, it was pretty helpful. Um, you could kind of gain a little bit of insight if you didn't know how to use Excel. Um, personally, I think if you've used Excel before, like, you know, you kind of understand a little bit how Excel works, but it's really, it's a really good refresher course. So it's, it kind of helps you understand, you know, what you need to do. And when you complete the Excel certifications, so there's two certifications you can complete. You can either complete the associates level or the expert level. Um, if you 
it's a really good refresher for the associates level, but if you want to complete the expert level, it's probably good to also do a little bit of Excel like outside that as well, practice it on your own. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good workshop. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me personally, um, I did the expert one because um, for actual studies stream, everyone had to do it. So um, I think for the normal, like regular co-ops, you can do like the just associate, but for the more technical streams, you have to do the expert one. Um, I guess for me personally, I found the Excel workshops to be really helpful because they got some industry partners in to talk about like how they use Excel in their work. Um, so I think for my year, I think they had NDIS come in. So one of the government disability schemes um, come in to talk about how they use Excel in their work and you could really see like that link between what you learn in the classroom to actual like usage in the workplace and then after my placements I actually found that like to be real <laughs> so like it's not just like fake they're not just like saying that it's connected to the workplace because like they want you to do excel it actually is a skill that you really need so I found it very rewarding that there were these workshops and certifications provided by co-op that we could do and it's completely free as well so um otherwise the certifications cost I think around $150 if it's not covered by the uni so it's really good that you get that certification without any charge and you get a nice badge on your LinkedIn as well so <laughs> I guess that's another bonus of the Excel workshops um, I guess another really good thing about co-op is that we're not just focused on, on the work. Um, so even though we've gone through all of the stuff that you can learn and all of the experiences that you can have academically and stuff like that, um, the social side of co-op is also really great. So I think Jess can talk more about this. Um, but there's a co-op society that I mentioned. Um, and basically, it's just a student society of all the co-ops. And they just run events throughout the year. So just you want us to share some of your favorite things that have um, you've been part of and what kind of things people can look forward to. Absolutely. So Co-op Sock was, they call it Co-op Sock, short for Co-op Society, it was one of the biggest parts of my first year at UNSW. At UNSW, there are over 300 clubs and societies designed to bring people together that have something in common. So for me, the society with a bunch of co-ops run by a bunch of co-ops was the best thing. Um, it was a really lovely cohort and now that I'm the social director, it's my job to make sure that co-ops play just as hard as we work. Uh, we all get into co-op because we know how to study hard um, and, you know, we all need a break from that. So um, coming up, I'm running a harbour cruise for all of the co-ops, which is super exciting, an opportunity to dress up and get together, almost like a year 12 formal, but better. Um, we also run the um, first year camps like I was talking about which is just an amazing opportunity to get to know everyone that you'll be doing the next four or five years of uni with. Um, we run little events throughout the year, little events on campus, scavenger hunts and things like that to get to orient yourself around campus so that you're never lost without people you know or without knowing the way to your nearest lecture building um, when you start uni. So that's what Co-op Society did for me um, and it will do for the rest of the degree but in the first year so helpful to get me just oriented with the right people in the right places on campus. Yeah I think having that support is really important because as I mentioned I started co-op in my second year so I didn't really have like that kind of already established community there so um looking at like the co-op society and all of that like you can really see how helpful it is to have a group of people that are studying the same things as you already there so I think for me personally, I started my degree with only knowing like one person and I had to actively like reach out and talk to people and make friends. Whereas with co-op, like you're already meeting them from before you even start the degree at like kickoffs and stuff like that. So you kind of already meet people just because you're co-op and you meet other co-ops like that as well. And you form that community that's already like really strong. So I guess like in that way, um, it's one advantage that co-ops have compared to the normal student in that they have a really strong network with each other. Okay, so um, I guess another thing that people like we've gotten back into now that COVID's over is having these cohort lunches and dinners. Um, have you guys had any opportunity to go on to a cohort lunch or dinner? If not, I can get into it. Okay, you can... I, I went on a cohort like a dinner like last year I think we haven't had a chance to do one this year 
um, because I think at the beginning of the year there was uh, one of our people might have got COVID, so uh -huh. very possible. But we went last year and it was it was really fun. Um, went to I think Vipinos or Vapianos. I don't know how to say the name, but it's somewhere somewhere in the city. It's like an Italian place. Um, and basically we, we got all the information system co-ops from first year all the way to fourth year, um, whoever wanted to attend. Um, and it was really nice to meet everyone, especially as a first year, you know, to meet the people in older years who can give you advice on you know, how to continue with the course, any tips they might have. It, it's very useful advice. Um, and it's just great to just meet everyone as well. Uh, and Christine, our lecturer in charge, our course coordinator, I guess, she shout us all drinks so that was definitely a positive of that night um, but yeah it's a really fun time and that that first dinner happens quite early on in your sort of first year so it's great to just meet everyone not only in your cohort but like in people in the years above as well yeah and I think these um catch-ups really give you the chance to like really get to know like the people in your cohort but I think for mine as well like the actual stream um, we tend to have our lunches with um, the actual like School of Risk and Actuarial Studies. So they invite a couple of the lecturers in to come talk to us. Um, and I guess it's like more like meeting them outside of your lectures and tutorials in more of a social setting. So um, I think for our lunch recently, we went to this place called The Lounge and it's like some exclusive restaurant that's only for staff. So um, I didn't even know it existed. But because of this co cohort catch up lunch, I got to go to this really like really fancy place that's somehow in uni. <laughs> it's in like the library at the very top, which I didn't know even existed. But thanks to co-op, I was able to have a lunch there. So and it was all covered by um, the co-op um, and the lecturers as well. So that was really nice to have a nice lunch and get to know them. Because um, the whole time, like I kind of just knew my lecturers as like people on the screen and like people who read like the content to me <laughs> but um I got to know like the personal side to them so like things like they're asking me like oh where should I bring my kid for tutoring and stuff like that so I found it was really nice to see like the human side of my lecturers and kind of get to know them and it really makes them easier to approach as well so now that like I have that relationship um friendship with the lecturers it's easy for me to go up to them and ask them if I had any questions about um the course I'm doing or any like questions in general so I find it's really rewarding because co-op really sets you up to have all of these connections and relationships with everyone at university um okay we have a question in the chat so from Tanisha are there certain courses in which you can apply for the co-op program or does it apply to every course at UNSW okay so for the co-op program, um, there are like the different streams that are on our website. So for those, um, they, I think it's just for the business programs, they're called like separate different. I think for the actual, for the commerce and stuff like that, it has like the co-op part next to it. So it's a different UAC code. Um, but for the other um, programs, they have the same UAC codes. So if you're talking about like applying to the actual degree, then um, that's a bit different. Uh, for the business streams because the UI code is a bit different if you're talking about like the specific courses um so under the co-op program you study the same courses as like the regular students you go through like the same like for example actual studies we have this thing called exemptions courses which you need to do in order to get qualified as an actuary so you do the same courses as those but on top of that, you have your industry placement courses. So um, the industry placements are counted as units of study, which is really great. So that, um, the work that you're doing also counts to your program. So those are the courses which are only available for co-ops because um, only co-ops can go on industry placement training. So um, that's why those courses are different from the normal courses. I hope that answers your question. Um, I don't Wait, know. Um, exactly. Okay, I think it might have been around the streams. Yeah. I think the question might be around the stream. So just in case it is around the stream, so you, there isn't a core program for everything. So for stuff like med and law, there's no core program for. There is only a certain select few ranging from like business to like your STEM ones um, or engineering, but it's all on the website. So I'm sure you can just find it there. Yeah. And one thing to note is that um, the availability of the stream also depends on like the sponsors who sign up. So, um, for example, in engineering, if there wasn't like 
a sponsor for that engineering stream, then that stream wouldn't occur that year. So um, you'll be notified ahead of time um, if that was the case ahead of your interview briefing day and you'll get an email communication about that. Um, so with the streams, you can choose up to three um, in your application. So just make sure you go on the website and look through all the different streams available and see which three really appeals to you and put that down. It's also up to three, so you can put less than three if you want. Um, but yeah, hope that answers your question. So some other questions we have in the chat. So while on placements, do you work full time? And if so, how do you balance your studies with that? So whilst you're on placement, you do work full time. So um, uh, you work full time and you study part time. So whilst you're on placements, you only study like one course a term whilst you're on placements. Um, do you guys have any tips on how you balance your studies whilst you are on placements? I might actually start. Um... As an engineering scholar, I don't have to do any courses while on placement, which is quite nice. So it does depend um, on what degree you're planning on doing co-op for. So if you want to do co-op for a business degree, then you probably will have to do at least one subject while you're on placement, which um, most of my friends, I'm sure, Riddle and Christian will tell us. You just do at night, you do out of hours when you're at home. Um, if you're studying an engineering or a science degree, it's likely that you won't have to do a subject while you're on placement um, and you can just work nine to five during the week and go home and that's all you have to do. Yeah. yeah. Guess, oh, you good. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I was just saying, I guess um, to, to kind of answer that question, you do study, at least for my streams, so information systems, you do study part-time, so that's one course in the term and you do work full-time, so that's pretty much like 40 hours a week. Um, and to be honest, it can get quite overwhelming at times, especially when you're in the assignment period. So you've got to dedicate time to your assignments um, as well as making sure that the work you do on the internship is up to standard. Um, but it does it does get easier, you know, when you've got other people doing it alongside with you, you know, you've got your other co so you can kind of relate to them in a sense. Um, and the best way to sort of manage that is to make sure you have a schedule or like plan it out. Um, plan it out in advance because you don't want to you know pile your work all up to like right before your assignments um that is not a good thing to do trust me that's definitely not a thing you want to do um and yeah i guess just planning it out and making sure that you know you let your managers so the people who you'll be working under you let them know that you know you might have assignments coming up or final exams coming up most of the time they are pretty lenient and they just let you off to have a couple of days of study leave um to ensure that you know you manage your uni studies as well as your full-time work so it might be a bit of a challenge at first but you know i'm sure a lot of you guys are in year 12 right now and that's also a massive year you probably have a lot of anxiety or stress um, related to the hsc um so i'm sure that you guys will be able to manage this as well if you get in yeah i actually found like going on placement was really good for me to improve my time management because i knew i had to stay organized otherwise i'll fall behind compared to when I'm off placement where I'm a bit more chill because I know like oh I can just don't sleep that day and I can catch up but whilst you're on placement you can't exactly do that because you have to wake up at 9 a.m for your placements so um, I guess being on placement really helps you learn that time management skill that you'll need eventually anyways so um, whilst you're on placements it's really preparing you for the future so like skills that you need are all built in whilst you're on placement. So I guess that's really valuable for me as well, because as an actuary, I have to do studies after university as well to complete like my qualification. So even if I'm not on placement um, in the future, like I still have to use that same time management skill because whilst I'm at work, I have to study after work as well to get that qualification. So it's really preparing you for that future whilst you're on placement. Um, I guess another question that we have is, are the placements year long? How many hours do you work per day and per week? And when are your lectures held? So um, for the placements, um, they're not year long. So they're like held at different times of the year. So me personally, for the actuarial stream, um, our placements was at the end of the first year for three months, September to December. Um, and then I went on placement like in the second year, uh, oh no wait, my placement was the end of the second year for three months. And then third year, it was a bit longer. It was six months and then six months, although there was like a slight break in between. 
Um, and then I kind of also asked for a bit of a holiday from my sponsor because I wanted to have a bit of time off. So they were happy to accommodate for yeah, that. So that I was able to get a bit of a holiday as well in between. So that kind of extended my placement by a week or two. Um, so I guess it's really flexible in that where you can, if you need a break, you just have to talk to your supervisor and communicate that. But otherwise, like the placements are at set times and all of that information is on our website. If you go to the programs underneath it, there's like this thing that says IT placement schedule. And then it has like all of the streams and the different times that they're on placements at, and it's all color blocked. So you can see when your stream would be on placement. Um, so how many hours do you work per day and per week? So that really depends on which company you're at and which um, stream you're at. So I know like for some streams, they definitely work more hours than the regular streams. So for example, like investment banking, like since the culture of investment banking is working more hours, obviously like you might be, a, you might have to work more hours because you need to like get used to that culture if you're planning to work in there in the future. But for other streams, for example, like actuarial, um, if I'm in the consulting, placement then obviously my hours are a bit more like longer because of the nature of the work but if I was in like my other companies they might not need me to work over time or like like work a bit less hours at times just because of like the amount of work that they have so it really depends on which um company you're at but typically I would guess that it's around nine to five with like an hour break for lunch that's like the typical hours um but it kind of fluctuates depending on the company and the work um, when are your lectures held? So the lectures is up to you to choose. Um, so in university, like your class times isn't dictated by like some supervisor. Um, you're in charge of like your own timetable and you choose what times you want to do your class at. So there's a lot of flexibility and individual like freedom to choose that. So if you're like a person who can wake up, you would choose 9 a.m lectures but personally I can't do that so I always put my lectures at like 6 p.m 7 p.m because I know I'll be able to make those um since I'll be awake at that time so it's up to like your personal choice of where you want to put your lectures um typically if you're on placement you will put it outside of the work hours um but if you're not able to arrange that um your sponsors are always happy to let you go off for an hour to attend your class um but you just need to make sure you communicate that to them Okay. Oh, oh, you, sorry. You go, yeah. You. For that, for engineering as well. Um, sometimes with a smaller degree, um, there's only one op lecture option in your timetable, which might be a little bit different. Feel free to put in the chat whether you're interested in engineering or business or science for us as well, um, so that we kind of have an idea of what you guys are most interested in hearing about. So for me, for engineering, there is one option I get for lectures, but they are all recorded. So if I need to be somewhere else at 3 p.m. on a Thursday, that's fine. I can watch it back anytime. So if you're on placement and you can't make the lecture live when it happens, you're going to be okay. You can do it back. Yeah. Okay. And are you able to choose where you do your placements or who your sponsors are? Do you guys want to maybe share your experiences with that? Because I think it's a bit different stream to stream. So maybe Christian? Cool. So with marketing you sort of put in preferences so um yeah you, that's literally summary so you put in preferences and then i think the co-op office sort of negotiates with like the sponsor so the sponsors have your resumes as well so they sort of like match up who they think would be like a good fit and then sort of the subsequent ones the co-op office would sort of try to balance it so you're not in like the same industry twice um and get like a breath of experience but generally like um even though you don't really get to choose definitely um, you still get like a, you can still guarantee that you have a good range across like a breadth of industries and breadth of roles as well. Yeah, and I think for actual studies, um, for us, it was, we put our preferences in and then they randomly sort it and then that's what we get. Um, but I think they actually built like an R program to like kind of use like coding to put our preferences in and then like switch it up based on that. But yeah, as Christian mentioned, it really takes into account like what you're interested in personally and then aligning that to what the sponsors are looking for. And they, I think they do set a cap on like how many like industries you go to. So like for actuarial studies, we, we had to put in companies that we already went to, we had to put that last in our preference. 
and companies that were in the same industry, we also had to put that later in our preferences as well. So they really try to make us go to a different comp in different industry with each placement that we're in. Okay, do you guys have anything else to add to that? Um, I'll just talk about it in terms of like the information side of things. Um, in terms of information systems, it's again, it's very similar. So for us, we've got, we're quite a big stream. So we have quite a few sponsors. Um, so all in all, we give our first six preferences um, and we rank them one to six. And, you know, they, the co-op office tries to allocate you to your first preference. Um, and if not your second preference, if not your third preference, but they, they tend not to like give anyone their fifth or sixth preference. They try to have, they try to make sure that, you know, you get your top three or four preferences. Um, and the way they decide preferences is that, you know, if there's like a clash or something, um, sometimes I'm pretty sure it's just random. Like if two people put, for example, um, American Express, because I went to that place. So if two people put American Express first, um, then it will randomly be allocated to, I guess, whichever co-op scholar gets it there, decided by the co-op office. But if someone puts American Express second and someone else puts American Express first, the guy who put American Express first would get that as their company. Um, so again, it's it varies stream to stream. Um, but again, in information systems as well, in your second placement, if you didn't get you know, your first, second or third preference, um, they will try to allocate your next batch of preferences so that you get your first, second or third in your second placement. Um, so it's pretty good that way. It's a pretty fair system in my opinion. Um, and to make sure that you get to experience companies that you want, as well as giving you a good breadth of exposure like Christian and Kelly have said. Yeah, once again, I'm completely different. <laughs> um, I, my stream is so much smaller. So I started with two and just recently I've grown to three in the materials um, science stream. So there's three scholars and three sponsors. So we don't get a choice at all um, for the three. I've got three sponsors, which is great because I've got three placements. So I go to each one of them. Before when there was two scholars and two sponsors, I was going to double up at Rio Tinto. So I was going to go to Rio Tinto, my second sponsor who's We Minerals and then go back to Brisbane. Um, but now I get to go to all three. So it also depends on the number of sponsors you have available. Obviously, if there's three or less, you don't get a choice at all. Yeah. And um, even if you don't do your placement at like a specific sponsor that you want, um, it doesn't like end your connection with them either. Because there are a lot of like co-op events where you can like speak to the sponsors so, and like connect with them. Uh, as well as like after when you're applying for grad roles, um, they do like have connection events with like all of the sponsors. So for example, when I was applying for my grad role, um, I didn't do a placement at EY, but they still invited everyone to like, uh, like a, a night where we just had drinks and like had a meal together. Um, and like Finity and PWC, they had like a virtual meet and greet for all the co-ops. So like, even if you don't do a placement, you can still like be connected to that company. So personally, like I chose like a grad role, which I didn't even do a placement at. So, um, so that's how like, you can still go to the company even if you didn't do your placement there. So don't like think that like, just cause you didn't do a placement, like you don't get to go to a company you want cause you can still eventually get there if you wanted to. Um, do you get paid while you're on placement? So um, with the co-op um, program, it's a scholarship. So you get paid like an, an, like an annual like thing anyway. So it's that 19.5, 19.6 per year. So um, like you, you already get paid that scholarship. You don't get additional on top of that, um, if that's what you're asking. Um, I think for some streams, I think was it mining? I think you get paid an hourly rate but I'm not completely sure on that and I don't think any of us do mining so um the information is on the website there I think there's like a paragraph underneath saying like um what the rates are for mining um what are your thoughts on the co-op program in comparison to cadetships so um all four of us have only do done the co-op program so we haven't done a cadetship so we don't know like the experience of a cadetship but I think from like my friends who have done a cadetship. The main difference is that with the co-op program, like it's a university program. So like they're really focused on not just like the work part, but also like your academics and like your social connections and stuff like that. Um, and with the co-op program, rather than just working at one company, it, 
in a cadet ship, the co-op program, you can work at three companies, which is so much like more experiences and more people that you can meet and more projects you can go on. Whereas with a cadet ship, you're only at that one, one company for like three, four years and you're limited to just that company. Um, so I guess that's like a bit of the difference between the co-op program and cadet ships. Do you guys have anything else to add on to that? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think pretty similarly to that, um, as well with cadet ships, you could have a return of service depending on who you're doing it with. Co-op is really great in that it gives you that breadth of experience. And then you also, you don't have to be employed by a sponsor afterwards but you are really highly likely to be if you want to be. Um, a lot of co-ops get offered employment by their sponsors after they graduate, which is great, um, but you do, you're not obliged to return that service at all. Um, the co-op program, in terms of if your cadetship is paid, I assume they are pretty similar. We get that money fortnightly just into our bank accounts um, and then we get that same money throughout placement. So that's probably a similarity. I think it would be each to their own, whether you're interested in studying at university on and off with full-time work, or whether you want to do the same thing the whole time with a, um, a different company. Yeah, and I guess there's like the co-op program. There's also like a lot of the different programs other than just industry placement. There's things like the Excel workshops we mentioned, leadership camps that we mentioned, like a whole society for co-ops. It's like something you don't have with the cadetship. And I guess one thing we haven't yet covered is the alumni mentoring, which is a really good program for the co-ops, um, which you wouldn't get in a cadetship because um, with the cadetship, you're only limited to that company circle. Whereas with co-op, there's like such a broad circle of people who've graduated, people who are sponsors, people who are like teaching you and stuff like that. So your network with the co-op program is much larger. So um, I'm not sure if any of you have like participated in the alumni mentoring program, but um, do you guys have like anything you want to share about that, your highlights? Yeah, sure. Um, I can comment on this. Um, yeah, no. So I've got assigned my mentor in, I think, start, before my first placement, so either end of first year or, I don't know, end of first year or like just start of second year. Um, yeah, my guys know it really cool. Oh, we met up like, two or three times before we went into like full lockdown with COVID again. But um, no, I think it's just really good because they try to match you up with someone who's either going to the same or used to work at the same company as you guys or have like some interests. So I was going to McDonald's and my mentor used to work at McDonald's. So then he would um, give me like really good advice before I went to, um, before I started work, which I think is just really like reassuring um, going in with all this like advice and like knowing who to like reach out to if you need help um, and stuff like that. And I think just like overall, I think something that's like really underrated is that the co-op program definitely has a really, really big alumni network that spans across like multiple, multiple different years. And you sort of like never realize when you're sort of in the workforce, how many people came from the co-op program and it's really cool to be a part of like this giant community and I'm sure it's sort of helped out from the line. Yeah, definitely. It's easier to connect with people as well if you've had common experiences. So like if I'm in, at work and then I bump into someone and it turns out we're both co-ops, it's easier to talk about like something we have in common and like they can give you some tips and you can kind of tell them of how your experience is going and it has like an organic conversation you can have, which you wouldn't have had if you weren't co-op. Did you have something to add to that? Because I saw you unmuted. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was just going to agree, Christian. I think it's a really good opportunity with the alumni mentoring. Um, so I got assigned my co-op mentor at the end of first year. And she was absolutely amazing. She was actually the first batch of co-ops ever. Like, I guess, so BIT, or as it was called back then, now it's called BIS, was the first co-op degree. I mean, she was part of that. She was part of that graduating year. Um, so it's really cool to see her experiences, how she's seen, you know, the technology change, rise and fall throughout the years, because we're talking about a time before the 2000s, you know, when the internet was just coming to being and, you know, iPhones were a thing and stuff like that. Um, so it's really cool to hear her experiences. And it was also really interesting because she was one of the tutors at, at UNSW as well. Um, so she also you know, was take, is taking one of my courses right now. Um, so it's cool to have that connection previously already um, and you just learn, just basically just learn from her and her experiences. So yeah, it was really good. It's been a really good program. 
Yeah, and I guess with co-op, it's really good to have like people who've gone through the same experiences as you. So if you're ever like stuck on something or you're not sure, you can always like ask for help. So one thing that I had problems with when I was like going through grad recruitment was like I wasn't sure like which company I wanted to go to and also like uh like there's a bit of a gamble choosing a company which I didn't do my placement at so basically like I just like reached out to cops that I knew who had like recently gone through the grad process or like people who were like a couple years older and kind of just like put in like time to have a chat with them and ask them like oh how did you decide um, I'm like having some difficulties um, choosing and then they were really happy to just like walk me through like their whole decision process and like what kind of factors that they considered and that was really helpful because it's really good to have someone who's been in your shoes and have has gone out of it like with a positive outcome so I think it's really rewarding to have that like experience like you know you can learn from their mistakes rather than making the same mistakes again um I guess another thing in the chat, I'm going into year 11 next year. If I drop out of physics in year 12, would it affect my co-op scholarship or will UNSW focus on my ATAR? Um, so I think with physics, I guess that just depends like which stream you're like looking into going to because some streams have physics as like uh, assumed knowledge. It's not like a required knowledge because UNSW changed like the thing for engineering. So, yeah, you can take that, Jess. Yeah. Um, so for physics, if um, definitely just stick with physics in year 11. See how you go. See if you love it or not um, before you get too like worried about thinking about, oh, I'm going to need to drop it. Don't worry. Just see how you go in year 11 to start off with. As Kelly was talking about before, um, you do need the minimum ATAR of 96 to get a co-op um, scholarship. So that is just a blanket. That's a check the box kind of thing. Um, and then from there, as long as you've ticked that box, then co-op focuses on your application. Um, we actually offer you a position conditionally before we get your ATAR because we're so much more interested in your application. And then we just make sure when ATARs come out later on that you get the ATAR. So it depends what other subjects that you're doing. Feel free to put your other subjects in the chat. Um, physics is a great ATAR booster, but if you're doing badly at it, it's going to consume a lot of your time and not help you. Um, for engineering, most of them will have physics as assumed knowledge. Almost, uh, almost every engineering student has to do physics first year, although I'm not sure if chemical engineering do. I think they might get out of it. So um, also just check, go to the UNSW handbook to check um, which physics, like whether physics is part of your first year degree. Um, if you want to tell me which engineering you're interested in, I probably would know off the top of my head, but you definitely you do want to do physics in year 12 um, if physics is part of your first year at uni. It's just going to help you so much um, because half of it you will have done before. It really makes a difference. I hope that helps. Um, feel free to turn your like, mic on or anything if you wanted further clarification. Yeah, and I guess like one thing that Justin mentioned was also that there are like bridging courses as well. So if you didn't do physics in high, in your HSC, there are bridging courses that like you can do in the holiday before you start uni. Um, so that's how like if you haven't done it, you can get that knowledge still. Um, so we have a bit two more questions. So I think these will be our last two questions before we wrap up. So um, Erica's question: What do you think made you stand out when you were applying for the co-op program? Uh, do you, any of you want to take this question? Um, I don't know if this was the reason I stood out, but it was definitely Sapphire and leveraging my application. And I think this can probably segue into like the second question as well. Um, I think the sort of mix of it, I think when, when you try to stand out, it's really standing out by like who you are as a person. And it's definitely not dependent on the extracurriculars you do. So I have a bunch of my friends who are in co-op and they didn't do that many crazy extracurriculars sort of outside of their just normal like school prefect or just like your normal school studies and stuff like that. I think the way you want to see is you want to differentiate yourself by your personality, what you believe in, what you're passionate about, how you can like carry yourself. And that is usually a product of your extracurriculars, not that it really like, defines who you are. But for me, I think some sort of things you can think about is like volunteering so volunteering is a really good thing to sort of do on the side of uni um i personally was really passionate about business so i did 
this thing called the JA Company of the Year program. I don't know if they still run it, but essentially you like make your own startup. So then when you're sort of applying for the co-op, it's pretty cool to be like, yeah, I made my own startup, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I think just like find things that are like different, stuff that like you actually enjoy doing. I find that like all of the examples I talked about during my interview, stuff like photography, um, running the startup, were things that I just do for fun anyway. I feel like if you're doing extracurriculars for the sake of getting in, you're not going to sound the most passionate talking about it and you're just like not going to have that much fun doing it while you're doing like while you're doing the commitment. So honestly, just like do something that you actually like genuinely like passionate about. And as long as you can communicate that in the interview, I feel like your passion is what sends you out. Um, oh, yeah. I think the it was called the JA Company of the Year program. I don't know if it's still running, but it's sort of junior achievement. I think it's like um comes out of UTS startups or something. I don't know if it's still running, but hopefully it is. It was a good program. Yeah, and I guess with that, like, um, don't try to like replicate like things that you've heard co-ops do, like things that they got them in. Um, so don't just like do the program just because Christian did it, do it because you're actually interested in it. Because with co-op, it's not really a formula, like it's not checking like, oh yeah, this person was a school captain, yeah, they got in. Rather than the activity, it's like what you've learned from it. And like, even if it's like, for example, like a part-time job, it might seem like not as impressive as like someone who was like a national skateboarder or skiing, something like that. Like it might not sound as impressive, but like if that person can't like say what they've learned from like skiing compared to you who, who can say like, I learned like customer relationship skills. I learned how to like talk to people and like things that you've like learned, like there's no point doing that um, activity unless you have something you've actually like gained out of it. So make sure you actually have an interest in the program, uh, in the activity, and like you're actually trying to improve yourself rather than just doing the activity to t tick a box. I think. Uh, just, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I know we're running a bit short on time, but I think it's good as well to show, even without like any extra curriculum and stuff, just to like show that you have a passion for the subject or field that you're applying for. So a way that you can do that is, you know, if you're doing something in tech or like something related to coding, um, you can do online courses and you can kind of talk about that in your interviews as well, because it shows the interviewer that you have an active passion in what you're applying for. And then it also tells them, okay, this person is willing to work towards the goal to improve themselves. So it's good if you want to like do things relevant to your degrees. I know personally for me, I did a few online courses in coding just to brush up my coding skills and I also did a sort of something very similar to Christian so I did like a young entrepreneurs some sort of, sort of business case comp or something like that where you had to kind of tackle a brief and then build build a startup provide all this financial data etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so that was relevant for me because I'm doing a business slash tech course um, but yeah find what's relevant to your degree what you're interested in and look into the things that are available for you. Yeah, and one question that pops up in the application and interview stage is also like what you want to do in your career and what you're interested in. So I guess like with that, like do a bit of like research into the actual like jobs that are available and like what kind of skill sets that they have and the different industries that are available there and kind of see like what kind of appeals to you and why. So similar to like, for example, like if you're, if you're trying to go for med, like in the interview, they'll ask you like, why do you want to do med? It's like the same thing. Like you have to find reasons for why you want to do that particular stream. Um, but of course, like they don't expect you to know like everything because you're just like in high school and you're entering uni, but they kind of just want you to show like you have a bit of interest in like the area you're going into. Yeah, Jess, did you have something to share as well? Um, just really briefly, if you don't, if you haven't done any of like a startup thing or for engineering, um, there's not heaps of those around as there are for the business programs. Don't stress there's, <laughs> there's no right or wrong thing that you can and can't have done. Um, just like the others said, just, yeah, show that you like, do you want to have a positive impact in that? So for me, I wanted to have a positive environmental impact on like materials processing or design materials that are more recyclable, things like that. You could talk about that in your application. Pay attention to where you spend your time without getting paid. Um, pay attention to your TikTok algorithm, your Instagram algorithm. Those things will kind of tell you what you care about. Um, and that can hopefully give you a pointer in the right direction. And like, don't be afraid to talk about just those things that you really care about in your um, interview.
Yeah, because like at the end of the day, the application is more like you're trying to show off like what you've learned and what makes you you. So don't just like do things for the sake of doing it, like try to get something out of it as well. Um, I guess like if there are no like further questions, um, I think that would be like the end of today's session. So um, we hope you've learned a lot more about the co-op program and like a bit more about what you can expect in your first year. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to go onto our website. There's like a chat bot there that we operate during the weekdays. Um, otherwise, there's also like the offline messages as well as our email address that you can reach us at. So if you have any questions, like whether it's like technical difficulties or any like questions about the application process, feel free to pop in a question there and we'll be happy to answer it. But yeah, hope you guys have a good night. Um, thank you for staying and listening to our talk about co-op. Thanks, guys. Yep, and applications close September 30th. <laughs> Hi.